Do we have a shot of, of Walter Reed? So we have the back door of Walter Reed. That was the president on the right side leaving earlier to go for an unannounced previously visit uh, to Walter Reed Medical Center for a physical. Now, his press secretary had mentioned last week that he was due for one, but the helicopter just showed up, press on the lawn, uh, and he took off and said, I'm going to get a physical. That was all he said. So uh, we're waiting now for the results of that. Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, you see the back door there, that gentleman off to the right center is part of the Secret Service. And as soon as the president exits, we will show you that. I ask, you know, what, what do they do in a presidential physical? And as cognitive, we already know from his press secretary, she said he wouldn't be doing that. Dr. Mark Siegel can answer some of these questions, professor of medicine and NYU Lango Medical Center and Fox News contributors. And it's great to have you. I know you've talked with a number of presidential doctors about this very thing. What do they do? What are they looking for? Well, first of all, Harris, this is a recent tradition over the last few administrations because there's a long history in America of obfuscating the president's health, going all the way back to George Washington. We oftentimes don't know how healthy the president is. So in the last few administrations, we've had the yearly physical. President Biden had it a year ago in February. And, you know, there was a very extensive report that came with it but it was as significant for what it left out as what it included. A physical itself, to answer your question, they do his vital signs, they do his blood pressure, they do a full body exam, they do a neurological exam, they're going to pay careful attention to his heart because he's in atrial fibrillation with an irregular heartbeat. They'll look carefully at his EKG, they'll probably do a cardiac echo. They want to make sure the rate of the heart rate is normal even with the unusual heartbeat, un irregular heartbeat. He's on blood thinner, so they're going to look out for effects of that. And they're going to report something that's going to try to reassure us. But what I'm concerned about and what the American public is concerned about is, what are they going to say about his neurological exam? Because he's got that stiffened gait that you talked about before. And, you know, the fact is they've been writing that off to orthopedic problems. But to a lot of neurologists that I've talked to, it's a shuffling gait that looks like it could come from some kind of neurological problem. So I will be looking for Kevin O'Connor, the House, White House physician, to say, mm -hmm. what is the MRI of the brain show? Is there a cognitive test or memory test, as you say? I'm expecting him not to say that. I think he should. I think there's a lot yeah. of risk factors here, and we've seen a lot of lapses going on that would want us to see an MRI of the brain. So the reason that I bring that up, uh, we have seen him fall. We see him struggle just weekly, really, maybe even daily, but we don't see every move he makes, you know, so we don't see him inside the White House. But what I have noticed is that that can be a precursor to falling. And you know, when you get into your 80s and 90s, I mean, my family on my mom's side, my grandmother passed three weeks shy of her 101st. She had never broken her hip, but they took special care of my family to make sure she wasn't in falling positions. And I don't see that with the president of the United States. When he's at a lectern and he's struggling and you can see him kind of shuffling, somebody hand that man a chair. Just put a chair up there. Where are his co, co you know, uh, hordes, the people that he has on his guests, either the, the vice president, his staff, somebody needs to be near him. So that's why I often bring that up. But you're tying it to something different that may also be prevalent in him, and we don't know. Well, and, and by the way, your point is extremely important, as usual, because you know what? If I just stick to the idea of that shuffling gait, a lot of people in his position would be at least using a cane. And you know what the problem True. is? If he falls on his head on blood thinners, that's an enormous mm. problem. It's not even just an 81-year-old falling. It's an 81-year-old falling on blood thinners. I agree that that's an issue, too, because they explained away his gait last year as orthopedic, but they never said what they're doing to keep him from falling. And you're right, yeah. they're not doing it. They had him walk into the belly of Air Force One, but that's as opposed to going up the front and then down the back. Right. But that's still not yeah. sufficient. That's but not I, sufficient. I'm talking on, on relatively flat surfaces, like platforms where he struggles and, you know, the sandbag incident where he tripped. Doctor, I'll let you go. We are going to watch uh, the outside uh, of Walter thing. Reed Medical. I, I've got to let you go, but I'll bring you back and okay. bring you the news when we can, outnumbered after the break. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.